Well, here's another project. 1929 Ford Town Sedan. Pretty well complete, but it's been in a shed for um, somewhere between 30 and 40 years. Basically fell into my lap through a sequence of generosity. Um, the fellow who owned it bought it when he was 16 years old, tinkered around with it, fired it up, took it up and down the road, and uh, and it sat in the shed. Life went on. And it turns out it was just basically a concession away from where I live here. See the blue car is over there ready in case it has to give a boost, but there's lots to do before we can get there. First method, first item of attack is the steering column. It's just sitting there. So I'll bolt it in place, get some bolts over, get it linked up. Um, have a look inside here. It's down on the floor, you can see the condition in here is kind of mixed. It could definitely be worse. Need old pinstriping left inside there. Uh, there's some of the cluster in the box. There's some tail lights bumpers steering wheels some spare parts some original parts there's one of the seat springs and the, the rest of the seat springs are already out you can see someone's already gone ahead and reinforced the roof with new wood and tin as opposed to what would be the originally be the vinyl um it's reasonably complete some of the brakes are disconnected all the wheels roll uh miraculously the tires are holding air they were brand new 30 years ago they're good years and we inflated them about four hours ago and nothing's drooped yet which is amazing considering you can see the line on this one where it's been sitting flat for who knows how long and uh just revived itself so i'm not going to ask much of the tires obviously if they let the devil out then so be it but the headlights I threw on there, they were sitting inside. I just figured I had to give it some dignity by putting its eyes back in place. The rad shell was the same. The hood is just sitting here. The pins are disconnected. The rad smells okay inside. The same with the gas tank. There's a little bit of rust, but thankfully it's not all that puffy, cruddy gum rust all over the place. So uh, it should be able to work. You can see the previous owner kind of just put straight wires so it's set up right now that when you turn it over it'll run to stop it you'll have to pull a cable out of somewhere so um, i'm just going to get the oil can put some oil distributor oil some other things it's not seized but it's tight if i can oh rad shell is disagreeing here yeah i might have to bring that down a bit But uh, yeah, let me get that steering column installed, throw a wheel on there and then start to tinker with the engine. Here's the contents. A box is a shite. There's at least three dash clusters, various states. Uh, who knows? Windows, um, tail lights, and plate brackets. There's the original floor. You can see someone rigged a janky pedal to it. Uh, jungle juice. I'm not sure what this is. An old thrush muffler, that probably would have put a good old tune out of the A, a bird. Um, those are the inner window frames for the back and then the two side uh, rear upper windows. The shite old battery. And some sort of a can of something let the devil out right here all over the place. Not sure what that is, but it doesn't look like the metal really likes it, so I'll have to get that out of there. Rear seat spring. And the... Uh, front bench seat and other springs are over there in the shadows. If 
found this neat old oil change tag on the door. It's a shell. There's the name of the fellow would have been written here. It's faded, but looks like the pen indents are there. Might be able to get some initials at least out of that. Uh, no info is readable anymore, sadly, but J.E. Myers, Shell Service Station, Huntington, uh, Province of Quebec, telephone 423. So I assume this was 1950s. So we can say it's last on the road in the 50s. Actually, if we look at the license plates, doo -doo -doo -doo. we have Ontario 1958 and underneath Ontario 1957. So late 50s, I guess, is when it was still ripping. Can you hear the mosquitoes? They're crazy out here, late May. Anyway, now that that's out, we can do a bit more of an analysis on the inside. Look at how much wood is on the back doors. That's almost like a split pulley from a line shaft. The back, you can see the original wood is pretty well still there from the center down, and then there's some new stuff in the top and some repairs. But uh, as for the floor, the back seat bucket is not too bad, but in the low spot here, you can see hole, hole, and lots of patches going on around the fender, mainly on that side. This side, not as bad. You can see some patchwork welds already done there. The back is pretty rough. So lots of work, but could be worse. So I got the socket set over here because the starter needs to come off to get the uh, steering column in place. So anyway, I figured you'd like to see what's in these mystery boxes. So, these box in a box, but the top box looks like it really ripped ass pretty hard. So, uh, that just looks like a whole bunch of wires. And maybe a wiring harness that is not from this car. So, that's kind of funny. Some brackets that also don't look Model A, but anyway. Uh, old rubber window seals, brush, unrelated, wires. Here's some spare parts. Inner brake retainer, whatever you'd like to call it. Here's some brake linkage. Hopefully the brakes aren't out of that. Maybe, maybe that's why they're all here. Got some more brake pads. They look new. Got the light rings, which is awesome. I'll put those on now to replace the little biller twines that are holding the lenses in place. Block. Something that's brand new. This looks like uh, maybe e-brake cover in the firewall. File. Oh. Yeah, battery hole cover. Mice had a good time on top of it, but otherwise new. Oh, there's a brake light switch. And the mice again had a bit of a go here. Model A owner's handbook. And the bottom there are a whole bunch of springs. That's a brake return spring, a whole bunch of screws. Oh, a spare set of points, levers. Actually, it looks like there's a whole new wiring harness in the bottom here, just mice have been out and about. Wow. Well, should be able to make that work. Those look like the original pipe springs. They're wet. Okay, so that's box number one. Number two, we've got cluster speedo 2829 oval. Uh, I got a solenoid, maybe they were trying to rig up a starter. Whoops, this is not model A. No idea what this is actually. This looks like 50s, 50s or 60s, made in Germany. Huh. No, no. No, no. Another oval speedo. What's the gauge thing? Mystery big pulley. Rubber. 
the pedal for another different vehicle. Trampoline spring, a couple coils. Those will they're worth keeping around. Bicycle generator, unrelated. Shaker crank for coal stove, unrelated. Spray paint can, 30 years old, does it work? Ah, no. And this black one, which I covered up unintentionally. The steering rod is bent and the top is cattywampus, so not going to use that. We have the window mechanism. Uh, tail light with three license plates over top of each other. Um, another one, Quebec. 58 Quebec. So we have 58 Ontario, 58 Quebec. And this box is just a whole bunch of brake pads. Oh, we got the little electronic box. Brake pads, brake pads, and one more cluster. Oval again. That actually looks in pretty good shape on the back. Not seized, everything speedos dingling around. Hmm. We have to work with. Sun's really setting now. You can hear the doves going off and whatnot. Just going to look at this side of things. So I went and sprayed a bit of WD 40 on that. Uh, distributor, distributor. You can see aftermarket condenser setup on the outside here. Not the best spot because the manifold gets really hot and fouls that pretty quick. So I'm just going to take this off, have a, have a look inside. Lots of carbon on that contact. Make sure the points are good. I'll spray some oil in here. Put a whole bunch of oil in here to try and help oil the top end. And uh, I have to replace one of these that just blew off on me, one of those little straps. There's no advanced retard link here. You can feel some spring resistance. Must be the old bottom cable is getting a bit stiff. So I'll check this gap. And uh, reset that. Um, make sure the coil's the right way. I noticed that this wire coming in was on the positive terminal. The, it should be the positive terminal going to, the, to this guy here. Um, don't know if they reversed the polarity i kind of doubt it for like with regards to the starter um i think the old battery that was in the inside was a six volt so anyway i'll make sure it's all set up like original with six volt positive ground and uh yeah we'll see what happens when the sun comes back tomorrow evening last update of this evening took the wheel off because I realized I had put the starter on with the Bendix gear still engaged to the uh, uh, the main ring gear and I went oh, damn okay well so it's locked up now so I pulled and pushed the car a little bit and realized damn the axle is spinning but the wheel isn't that's not good so just jacked it popped it off came right off no problem threads are in okay shape here uh this surface the grease is old and pretty stanky but it's in okay shape went down to the drum bad signs weld there but look at this ah what the heck what's this exploded bearing looks like a freaking filing off a drill press cutting and then in here there's another one mm. I don't know what it is, but I don't like it. So something went pretty wrong here. And on top of that, there's no key. No key at all. So a uh, bit of a Model A moment. Not sure what happened, but I'll take this off. Take this out of the way for now. Put a key in there so at least we can get things together and rolling. Uh, but this is, this is very strange indeed. 
it's another day here with four door hopefully she's gonna run so i'm just inspecting a few more things um the cable that comes from the starter oh inspector cat has the size of um terminal needed for for a positive on a battery uh that's the opposite because this is normally a positive ground car and you can also see there's a lead coming off right from this main contact up to the coil and if i look on the coil it's going to the positive so there as well they wired it thinking that it would be positive to uh, power as opposed to positive ground um, there's also a wire that runs from the negative of the coil right into the distributor taking place of the whole ignition system. So basically, once there's a battery on it, it's, it's firing. So I'm going to plug the battery in, see if we have sparks at the points. Um, took the plugs out, it looked okay inside, uh, bombed some oil in there and, um, pulled it around the yard with the four-wheeler a little bit just to make things move. And, uh, yeah, let's get some power to it little change of plans i've hooked up positive to ground negative to starter as it should be and we're going to run the cable to the case tractor as it's a six volt and use it as a surrogate battery so let me move it over here and uh, we'll see what happens i'm going to leave the coil in its current uh, position i'll hook it back up but um, a coil will fire if it's hooked up backwards, but it'll just be more of a gentle spark and it'll kill itself more quickly. So as long as we don't run it for long, uh, it should work. Maybe there's some sort of magic that the previous tinkerers did that I'm uh, not seeing yet. Something else strange that I'll point out is that the uh, guys put the condenser on the outside of the distributor even closer to the heat of the exhaust manifold than the original ones were. So. Definitely going to have to do something about that, but that'll be a little bit later. Hey, Mama. So we were able to crank it over there. The uh, starter is really tired. I'm thinking they might have run this with a 12 volt just to give it a bit more spin. Uh, also the old battery that was in this car, I don't know if it's six or 12, you can see that they were running it positive to the, uh, uh, to the input of the starter, which is strange. Um, seems to be running the right way when we use the six volt positive ground method. 
Uh, this guy got me thinking if they did run it on 12 volts and whatever ground situation they were running between the capacitor and the um, coil, uh, I'm sure it's all out of whack. So I figured the easiest thing to do for now would just be to take the whole distributor off and swap the coil and I'll put my uh, another distributor on there and we'll see if we can get some fire. So do that in the Model A is really simple. There's a whoops jam nut right here. Just loosen that off and then twist this out a little bit. All this is is a set screw. It doesn't go through or anything. It's just, just press, presses on the bottom of the shaft. So with that, just a little wiggle. And this thing is sitting very high. You see there's a gap under it and there's a pin in the back. That pin is supposed to fall into a little hole in the head for alignment, but it wasn't in there. So just lift it, should come right out. Wah! Okay, that came out with the whole rod. Oof, doesn't look so nice. That's probably what was causing the engine to uh, sound so crispy. Hmm, well, very strange that so much rust is going on when this thing was in a walled shed with a good roof for so many years. Anyway, We'll get oil on everything. I'll throw my other distributor in there and we'll see if she wants to fire. The weather has become very ominous. So we're gonna call it quits for the day and come back when I get the other distributor. Just got the hood on, not a second too soon either. Looks like she's just about to come down hard. And so I figured just grab the other distributor and coil off my uh, chassis project to see if we can get this one to fire up. So I'll uh, slap that in there, uh, we'll set the timing and um, see what happens. You can see how badly rusted in there it was. I had to put some heat and oil on here and tap it with a drift and now it's just starting to come on. Holy moly. Mm, there we go. Whoa. Okay, I'll hit that with the wire wheel and uh, we'll put her back in. So, cranks in. Timing pin, pulled out, pushed in, found the divot, uh, verified by making sure the piston is in fact at top dead center. So now with the little baton pointing to the um, first cylinder, we can line it up so that the points are just, just about to open in that way and that's about set. We're not being too picky here, just want it to fire and do some basic running. So the spark setup should be good to run. Now I know before you tell me, there are a couple instances of terrible car etiquette. This one here, uh, copper wire, it's just gonna have to do. I broke one of these things, so uh, it'll work. This with the being all janky here, hanging out, terrible, but it should run. So um, let me put the battery on and uh, see if we have spark. So I've taken off these contacts and put them all within about an eighth of an inch of their terminal, aside from the copper wire one. I'm gonna plug the battery in. It's an older battery, doesn't have much juice, but it does have enough juice going by this little spark to uh, run the coil. So let's see. Oh. Hear that? Oh, I definitely see that. Great news, we have fire. Okay. Next step is gas. So, I'm gonna put some, just a little bit, just to wet its throat. Uh, who knows what's going on with this gas cap? It has like a tire fitting. This is pretty cryptic. So, we'll open that up. I turn the valve off inside, which is aftermarket. It's like a farm fix. Um, you can see the fuel bowl, so if it's leaking, we'll see this fill up right away, and then we'll see what goes on with the carburetor. I haven't had anything apart, so 
So uh, your guess is as good as mine. This is a, a Tillotson carburetor, um, aftermarket. Could be from the mid 30s, came after the uh, Zenith cast iron carbs that came with these cars. Tank's dirty, but I've seen worse. A little bit stinky too. Okay, nothing yet. Let's go see if anything's leaking inside. Okay, that should definitely be enough to do something. Still no leaking, let me crack the valve and see what happens. Hello? plumbing in here is really out of whack. The tube comes down from the exit of the tank and then it dips and then it comes up so I might need to put a fair bit more before anything happens. See the float in there, holy jeez. Wrecked. Well, I'll put the rest of this little tank. There's only Maybe a quarter full to begin with. Okay. Crack the valve again. Well, that did something. Hey, Mama. How could you? Well, <laughs> something's going on here. I think you're going to need a little bit more gas though to get through. This is Inspector Cat. Could be plenty for testing purposes. Have enough juice to crank? Let's see. Include live cat reaction. There you go.
Okay, gonna shut her down. How do I do that? Like this. Ow. Oh. Yeah. Now that we know she runs, we gotta figure out if she holds water. Fill the lower holes. I'll have a look. How messed up that is. Ah, I go put the whole thing. Why not? I'm dripping it from your perspective. <laughs> Imagine the water pumps are having a good time. Oh. Lower cock is dripping, but uh, it's open, so I guess that should be expected. Close that up, that looks good. Some drips from the overflow where I missed. Mm. Lower hose, a oh, little drip, but nothing to be concerned about. Uh. Whoa, that'll bias the drip checking. Okay, there she is up to the neck. Water pump, nothing crazy. Top, a uh, little bit here. At least it'll hold for a little ride. Driver amenities are including but not limited to a mount crate chair and a quick disconnect kill switch. Let's take her for a spin.
hooked in, you can hear the thrust bearing is in a pretty rough shape. No brakes, I guess we're going backwards. Well, <clears throat> sure hope you enjoyed that. First run of this 29 town sedan in about 40 years. Have a look at my other videos, Model A, line shaft, flat belt, old iron. Have a great day.